All right, guys, welcome back to the hydroponics versus aquaponics trial. We're currently on day four. The systems are set up, they've been running, and over the last few days, we've been focusing on getting all the nutrient balances right. So this episode is gonna be focused predominantly on how to get your nutrients balanced, how to test for them, and how to dose for them. But we might as well just have a quick check-in and see how the system's doing. This is the hydroponic setup. And what you'll see here is we've got brilliant, healthy, white root developments. Now imagine, this is only four days old. The seedlings have already doubled in size from when we put them in. So progress is really good. But how does that match up to the aquaponics? <clears throat> We're at the aquaponics system. Um, as we can see here, the seedlings have also shown really good growth in just the few days they've been in the system. We've also got a very nice root system developing, uh, but it's too early to tell which is actually doing better. But as it stands, I'm really happy that the seedlings are progressing. So let's go see what we've been doing over the last few days. Hey guys, welcome back. We're on day number one of our trial. Um, so what we're gonna do now is just check that nutrient level of the hydroponic system. Obviously yesterday I started it up, I got it to an EC of one and a half, but as I mentioned, there is more water in the system, it's gonna run, so I'm expecting a slight drop on nutrient levels. Obviously also I wanna double check that pH. So let's quickly uh, take out my trusty test meter and let's have a look. So if you have a look at these two probes, just to show you the difference, this one here is my pH. Now with pH probes, the, the bulb or the ball at the top is incredibly sensitive, which is why we always keep it covered and also keep it wet. Very often if you don't, you let it dry out. These can only last sometimes a month or two. So make sure you look after it. The second one's my EC, and as you can see, it's got two electrical panels inside. Those two electrical panels basically are measuring the current flow between the two. And on the side there, that is my temperature monitor. So what this is gonna do is just give me an indication how my nutrient levels are looking. The other thing I will show you while I let this uh, stabilize and start giving me an accurate reading, because it can take, you know, half an hour, is you'll see that I have actually put a cover around the pump. So if you have a look here, you'll see I've got a Matala filter around this pump. Now the purpose of this is to stop that debris. So remember when I put those plugs in yesterday, there was a little bit of peat and vermiculite that can make its way into the system. Now the pump will pick it up no problem, but what can happen is it can block the inlets. So I've put this on just to make my life a little bit easier. Okay, so as you can see here, my EC has dropped to about 1.1. That's over there. But what is of concern is obviously my temperature. My temperature has gone up to 31 degrees. Now, the time of the day, it's lunchtime. It's a pretty warm day today. So you've got to bear in mind that temperature fluctuation if it's for too long, is going to stress my plants. Now the good news is when it hits evening, it's going to cool down again, but if this water does start getting too warm, you're going to have to regulate that, and that can be a bit of a challenge. But no worries, we'll see how that does, but I can see my pH has gone up a bit. That is to be expected with an increase in temperature. They do have a correlation. Uh, but what I want to do is just make sure I get those nutrient levels up a little bit, um, back to 1.5. So again, I've got my Shimon 212 Multimix. Details will be in the description of the exact mix that I'm using. And I'm just going to give it a little sprinkle, mix it in nicely, swirl it around. And I can see already that my EC is starting to go up. Currently it's at 1.2. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more. That should be plenty. 
give it a swirl. I'm going to move my, my probes onto this side so I get a more accurate reading. And there we go. So I have pushed it up to just below 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm doing that because I really want to keep it at that 1.5. But as I mentioned, as this water mixes through, it will drop a bit. So I'm very happy pushing it up to the 2 and, I, and I'm wanting to keep it between that 1.5 and, and 2. As we saw yesterday, my pH is coming down a bit, all right? So my pH was pretty high, sitting at 8, currently 7,3. So all I'm going to do, just add a tiny, tiny drop of acid again. So my pH is looking good. If you just have a look there, it's coming down nicely. It's going to continue dropping to about 6. Ideally, about 5.5 is where we want it. All right, let's go now have a look at the aquaponics. All right, so what I've just picked up here is a Pro JBL Aqua set. Now, the nice thing with these test kits is it's got a nice wide range of things that I can test for. Now, if you're doing aquaponics and you don't have one of these, um, I highly recommend picking one of them up. Really good value for money, and it has a nice wide range of things to test for. Obviously, the one that I'm very interested in today is going to be testing my iron. I've got my iron tester, or my, my vials, over here. And the instructions are actually quite straightforward. You'll notice on every kit, they give you the picture diagrams. So what I've got here is two vials, vial A, vial B. And both of them, I'm going to put five mils of the water that I'm testing into it. But only in one of the jars am I going to add five drops of my iron retardant. Now the purpose of that is the second vial is a control. Because my water might not be perfectly clear and the likes, it helps to give me a much clearer perspective and you'll see when I finish this test how important that actually is. So first things first, let's get five mils into each of these. All right, 10 minutes has now passed. So we're gonna check how the iron levels are on the aquaponics system. So the first one, which has the, the retardant or the, the reactant in it, goes at the bottom. The control goes at the top. Now, if you have a look in from the top, I keep going until both jars look the same color. That is somewhere about there. So yesterday my iron was at 0, 0,2. Today it's at 0, 0,4. All right, so what I'm going to be using today is the Hariba Scientific Lacqua Twin Set. Now, what's really nice with the, the Lacqua Twin is because it's digital, it gives me very, very quick, accurate results within seconds. The other really nice thing with this is I'm able to test the plant sap as well. So let's have a look inside this kit. And what you'll see is I've got some really nice uh, array of testers here. So the ones that I'm really going to be focusing on today, my calcium, my potassium and my nitrate. So I'm going to take them out. We're going to start on the aquaponics here. So all I do is just put a little bit of water into the tip of my my sensor there, I turn it on. All right. So what I'm seeing there is my potassium level is sitting at 7 ppm. Now in aquaponics, um, ideally I want to push that up. I need to get my potassium levels to around 30 ppm, but it needs to be in balance obviously with my nitrates and calcium. But that's great to know. Now, this in aquaponics is normal, guys. Potassium is always going to be deficient in an aquaponics system. But let's have a look and see what my calcium is looking like. Again, I'll just put some water in there. Turn it on. My calcium level is looking really good. Currently sitting at 60 ppm. My nitrate levels. Also sitting 
at about 56 ppm. Now, the important thing with my nitrate, my calcium, and my potassium is to get the ratios and the balance right on them. So I did add calcium to the system last week. So what I'm going to add today is my potassium. Now you want to keep them at almost the same level. So I want to get my potassium levels up to about 60 ppm. And what I'm going to be adding is uh, potassium nitrate. Now as I've shown you previously, we add this into my dosing bucket. This is so key in aquaponics. If you can get your calcium and potassium and iron levels right, your plants are going to do well and they are going to be successful. So let's add some of this into the dosing bucket. All right, guys, I've spoken before about the importance of nitrogen, potassium, calcium, and iron across hydroponics and aquaponics. Now, the biggest difference with hydroponics is I run my nutrient levels at almost two to three times what I do in aquaponics. So in aquaponics, I'm aiming for calcium and potassium to be about 50 to 60 ppm. In hydroponics, I'm actually looking at it to be between 150 to 200, even a bit higher depending on the concentration of my dosing system. So I'm going to be using my Laqua Twin Test like I did in my aquaponics, and we're going to actually have a look. So we're going to start with my potassium. Now, in my general hydroponic mix that I'm, I've been adding to get my EC up to uh, that one and a half to two, I know it contains NPK, nitrogen, phosphates, and potassium. So if you have a look here, my potassium levels are sitting at about 330 ppm. That's not too bad, okay? Um, I know that my EC is sitting at about two, uh, and my water is quite concentrated here. But what is important is that my calcium levels are matching that. Now remember, if my calcium level and my potassium levels are in line with my nitrate levels, my plants are going to be happy. Now, I haven't as of yet actually added calcium. And all I've been adding is my hydroponic mix. And if you have a look here, you'll see my calcium levels are very, very low in comparison to my uh, potassium. So what I'm wanting to do here is get the calcium levels up to par with that potassium. So let's go grab some calcium. We're going to add it into the system. Uh, and as I've mentioned before, never add the calcium and the potassium at the same time. There we go. So I'm sitting at 230 ppm. That's pretty good for me. I'm happy with that. That's now more in line with my, uh, with my uh, potassium levels. So I'm going to leave that there uh, for the next couple days uh, until I add the potassium again.